Dear students, today we are going to start with our new module and that is design of facilities. This is our last module in this course of geometric design. In the previous interaction, we completed the module 4 that was related with intersection layouts and under that we have talked about the add grade intersections as well as the grade separated intersections or interchanges, the design requirements, the various types of layouts which can be used under different traffic conditions. So, all of those things have been completed. So, let us now in this particular interaction we start with our last module and complete this particular module in the remaining lectures. Now, when we talk about the design of facilities, there are different type of facilities which can be looked at as a part of the geometric design, as a part of the associated features of any of the road network or the carriageway. So, what we are going to talk specifically are parking facilities, bus bays, bus shelters, truck laybys, bus rapid transit facilities, toll plazas and the pedestrian facilities like subways or over bridges or foot over bridges. Apart from that, two or three other items which have been left which we have not discussed all along the rest of the modules they are also going to be looked at towards the end and they are kilometer stone, access control and lateral and vertical clearances. So, let us start with the parking facilities. Now, when we talk about parking facilities, the very first thing which usually we talk whenever we are looking at a traffic engineering site and when we are talking about the traffic which is moving on the road is that what is the vehicle occupancy. So, how many vehicles are being occupied by any of the household? or in total population we talk about per 1000 people or per 1 lakh of people or households. So, there can be different ways in which this data can be presented. When we look at the information related to India then it says that 7.9 percent households own a car and 49.7 percent own a motorized two wheeler. So, it is not a very big number which is there and in terms of a, a index it comes out to be 22 per 1000 population in India. But if you look at uh, some of the European countries and uh, developed nations, then what we found is that it is as good as even 800 or more per 1000 population in those countries. But still, even with having these type of lower values, we are facing a problem. And the problem is because of the limited circulation space. So, we have uh, the road network, they have been provided in different lengths for urban roads as well as for rural highways, different widths have been also being provided. But the issue is that because of the total pressure which is coming on this road network, what we found is that these are many of the times at different locations congested and there is a difficult situation in terms of even the widening of that system because they are in the built up area. So, when we look at this sort of an information and try to correlate it with why there is going to be a parking problem, then one thing which we need to understand is that for majority of the time, whatever vehicle is being owned by any person or a household that remains in parking. Say we take an example, say for Delhi. Now, in Delhi, if suppose your travel time to work is say 2 hours. So, it is a big distance or it is not a big distance, but because of the congested network it takes lot of time. So, you are going 2 hours going in the morning and 2 hours coming in the evening that means plus 2 hours we have 4 hour of movement. Now, out of 24 hours only for 4 hours we are moving our vehicle and for rest of the 20 hours it is in parking and that is the problem. That is where we require a space to park this vehicle either at home or on a road network or at the destination which may be the employer's location. So, this is a big issue and that is why it needs to be tackled. Now, when we talk about the parking and because there is a scarcity of uh, spaces available at different locations, what is being observed is that many of the 
vehicles are parked on the road side. So, you have a say two lane road and out of this two lane some space is being occupied by some vehicles which are parked alongside the curb side. Now, once these are parked along the curb side, then there is going to be an issue even to the traffic which is moving on this particular road. So, in this condition the effective width say if we talk about only on the one side even or if we talk about both the sides that this type of a thing is happening, then the effective width which is being left is w 1 as compared to this w and this w 1 is going to be quite less than this w and therefore, the traffic which is moving on this particular situation or under this uh, condition where the stretch is being having the parking on both the sides becomes congested in nature. So, there is going to be a traffic congestion problem. So, this is one issue which will be there and when we are looking at uh, these things, then the another thing is that uh, there are different type of vehicles, there are different places where there is a requirement to park the vehicle and that is going to be defined by the land uses in that area or the type of activities which are going to be there in that area. So, how much space is being given to that? So, the floor space dedicated that will define that what is going to be the attraction value of that location or an area and this attraction value is going to have the thing in terms of parking demand. So, finally, again it comes back to the same problem and similarly these activities which are going to be there in an area they are being done at different points of a time in a day. Say we are going for banking, so we may say that it is from 10 am to 4 pm. So, very near to the bank the parking spaces are going to be occupied during this time period, but as soon as you are out of 4 pm you may find that there are a lot many spaces which are available which can be utilized by different other users. So, that is is a thing which is going to be there and therefore, there is a requirement to see that is there any possibility of uh, having a management of those spaces which are available. So, another issue is that because of the less availability of the land and that is going to be more specific in terms of an urban areas, where the cost of the land is also high and the land is also not available at each and every location. So, there is a problem that the vehicles cannot be parked off the street, you do not have spaces to do that. If they have been parked off the street, then it will help in a sense that it is going to have less congestion on the main road or the carriageway and therefore, traffic will keep moving in a smoother form. But if it is not happening, then what is happening as a part of a congestion is that there is going to be an increase in the travel time, there is going to be an increase in the user cost, both of the things are going to be increasing. So, it means it is basically taxing the driver. So, driver fatigue is also going to be there, the agony of the driver is also going to be there. So, these are the another associated things which needs to be taken care of when you are talking about the parking and the problem associated with the parking that the spaces which are required are not adequately available at a location. Unsystematic parking can also be another issue. You may find that there is a curb side and on that curb side the vehicles are being allowed to park in a certain fashion. But, because this is a high activity area, what is being observed is that there are other vehicles which comes and park at the back side of the vehicles which otherwise are being parked here. Now, there is an issue that this vehicle cannot come out, because there is a vehicle which is already being parked at the back. At the same time, this was the space which was given to the parking, now the space which is going to the parking is this much. So, that is also an issue. Now, when there is a movement of these vehicles in these congested conditions to and fro, so as to provide spaces for other, there is one another thing which is also happening is that the air and noise pollution may also increase in that area and that is an additional external thing which may need to be taken into consideration. Then 
the economic activity in any area is also going to be affected. So, if we have provided, so we have say shops here and the, this type of a parking is being provided and is being utilized by the parkers. Therefore, what is going to happen is that lot many economic activities are going to be there in this area and these businesses are going to flourish. But if this is a sort of a condition which is happening, then people will think twice while coming to this particular area, understanding that there is going to be a lot of time to search for a parking place and if it is not there, then they have to park in some random manner and if that is being done, then again there is going to be a problem with respect to the other vehicles which are being parked and there can even be a brawl or a fighting because of those type of situations. So, this thing if happens to an area, then that the footfall reduces in that area, that means there is a negative impact. So, there can be a positive or a negative impact of uh, the way how the parkings have been managed. So, that is also an issue. Now, when we are talking about these parking and when we are saying that there can be a possibility of having a parking on this uh, road itself or there is a road, but from here we have provided say some entrance or exit and there is a parking being provided at this. So, this is of the street parking. If this is a case, then there may be a possibility that how this of the street parking is managed by the public agency or by the private agency can also be a part as a tool to generate the employment. So, parking facilities, their design, their construction, their implementation at different locations can also be looked in this area also. So, this if you are looking at in this area, then this is beneficial to the society, to the community. So, why the guidelines are required? Now, guidelines are required to state the extent of parking provisions in any area and these have to be looked at on the basis of different things like by type of vehicle because we have different varieties of vehicles and they have different sizes, they have different turning radii or the steering capability. So, all of these things impacts to the space which is required to park a vehicle at the same time the maneuverability requirements that means, a vehicle which has been parked here like this. Now, if it has to come out then based on the radius it is going to take this much space and once it comes this way then only this vehicle will be able to move forward. So, this maneuverability, this circulation space also needs to be looked at and that is going to be are dependent on the type of vehicle associated with other features also like in this case as I can see there is an angle at which this vehicle has been parked with respect to the curb side. Or the location type, we have to look at the guidelines that if it is a shopping area then what needs to be done, if it is a any other commercial area what is going to be happen there, if it is a residential area or industrial area or there is a big premise where the employer has provided the parking within the premises, then probably not much needs to be done. But if it is an industrial area where lot many manufacturing is happening, then the trucks are going to be there. So, we have to see that where the trucks are going to be parked, how they are going to be moved. So, so means we have to see that what are the various types of land uses and activities and what are the required things out of that in terms of parking, in terms of say spaces, in terms of uh, the duration for which the vehicle has to be parked. So, that is also to be looked at. So, all of these things has to be considered when that is why we need a guideline. So, as to provide that okay, if you are in a very near to a hospital area or you are in a hospital area, then how you are going to decide that how many facilities needs to be provided for the parking of the vehicles. Time in a day is another issue. If you are in a busy area, say a shopping area is there. So, in the evening there is going to be lot of activity, maybe not in the daytime, but if it is a winter time, then maybe in the daytime also there is going to be a lot of activity. So, there are going to be a peak and off peak conditions 
and based on these peak and off peak conditions we may allow or we may not allow the vehicles to be parked in this area. So, that is a another thing we have to take into consideration and space restrictions are also going to be there and these space restrictions are in terms of the width of the carriageway. So, if the carriageway is only 5 meters or 5.5 meters wide or it is 7 meters wide or it is more than 7 meters wide, can we provide one side parking, can we provide both side parking is another issue that needs to be considered. Then there may be a requirement to implement the parking policies and these parking policies which may be related to restrictions, which may be related to prohibitions, which may be related to the fees to be charged. So, there can be different type of uh, such conditions which may be there. This helps in the management of the parking spaces. So, a systematized way of parking is going to be there and if that happens then it is contributing to the area contributing in a sense that if that or many people are going to be there to park their vehicles, obviously they are going to be involved in one or the other activity and if that happens, then the economic development of that area is going to take place in a right direction. So, when we look at these needs, when we look at that why the guidelines are required, then these things which whatever interventions we can think about, they can be divided into these four categories. The very first thing is that we should try to manage the things. So, whatever facilities are being provided, whether these facilities are provided on the street or they are provided off the street, whatever is that condition, we should try to first of all manage. And then if there is an issue while managing those available spaces with respect to the parking demand, then we should go for some policy interventions. wherein. We may think about as I said previously too and is being written here that we can think about restrictions, we can think about prohibitions, we can think about the charging fees to be uh, taken from the parker at a location with respect to time, with respect to vehicle or there may be a total prohibition that no vehicle is being allowed to be there in this area or it may be there on say some specific days. So, whatever is those policies are there, we can come up with the innovative policies also in here. The idea behind is that whatever spaces are there, we try to satisfy their demand with respect to those spaces. So, the supply versus demand that is tried to be looked at. Now, once we found that the supplied thing is not going to be adequate, maybe tomorrow, maybe two years or five years from now because there is continuously the increase in vehicle ownership and the number of vehicles which are there on a road or which are requiring the space for parking. In that case only we should go for a construction of a new facility. So, first of all we should try to manage, then we should try to have some policy interventions to work with the available supplies. And then if it is not working, so what we are doing is now we are providing additional supply here, so as to satisfy the demand. And this demand can be existing if the timely intervention has not been done or it can be future demand based on the projection, based on the growth rates. Apart from these three things, one another thing which needs to be looked at is an enforcement. Whatever we do, whatever the policy we are going to have, whatever the rules we are going to create, whatever the things we are saying that the vehicle has to park here or not to park here, enforcement unless it is there, the things are not going to be uh, smoother. So, this is also an important thing. So, let us look at one by one all of these things uh, uh, in our subsequent uh, slides. So, we talk about the manage. So, the management is going to be of the available spaces across the parking lots. Say you have series of shops here. So, different shops are being provided like this and there is a parking which is available on this side and as well as available on the other side. So, this is a parking being provided and there can be the movement in and out movement from this parking space on the road which is there on the side of these uh, 
uh, combinations of uh, shops. Now, if all of these shops they open on this side, then everybody will like to park their vehicle here. So, this is going to be the prime location for parking because once they park their vehicle here, they will go into the shop, will do the job and will come back and take their vehicle and go away. If they are parking their vehicle on this side, then there is an issue because they may have to come this way and then they can go into the shop and do the activity. It means the walking is increasing here. And instead of this, now there may be certain possibilities which we can look at. We can say that the shops can also be opened from the other side. So, that if the vehicle has been parked on the other side, then these people can get into the shop from that side. Or we can say that this particular area is being left vacant. And therefore, the people who have parked their vehicles here can come from this side and can go out from this side. So, that is another possibility of doing it. So, we have to see and how we are going to uh, do this management. Otherwise, you may found that this is highly in use and this is in use to a very lesser extent. Then marking locations for parking. Now, this can be long term and the short term parking. Now, long term parking and short term parking means they are with respect to the duration. So, people who are say employees, so they are going to have their vehicle for a longer period of time. So, they may be long term parkers. The people who are coming here as a retail purchase person. So, they are short term parkers. Say you are going to a restaurant, you have food. So, you will be there maybe for one hour or two hours. So, that is a short term parking, but the people who are being employed in that restaurant, they are there for maybe for 8 hours or they are there for 12 hours. So, that is a parking required for those people or their vehicles is a long term parking. So, can we manage these things separately in such a manner? So, can we say that we are going to have this as a long term parking and this as a short term parking if this is possible and helps this area, then this is also a sort of a management. Then another thing can be, can we allow the parking on one side of the carriageway or both side of the carriageway, but of course, this depends on the width of the carriageway. And it says that if the width of the carriageway is more than 5.5 meter, then one side can be there. If it is uh, more than 10.5 meters, then we can go for both sides parking. So, there are certain thumb rules or we have to look at in a sense that uh, uh, the through traffic which is moving on that carriageway is not going to be hampered and that is going to be the right way of doing it. Parking by vehicle type, lot many vehicles are going to be there. So, if you talk about a truck, so the truck may require a space like this, but if you are talking about a car, so the car can be in this form and if you are talking about say, say cycle rickshaw or you are talking about a scooter or bike, then the size is going to be further different. So, the size of a parking space is going to be different and that is also going to define that how much area is going to be uh, absorbed by the type of vehicle parking. So, we have to look at that also and this is also dependent on like the activities. So, if it is a say a Mundi area, so there can be a possibility of having tractors and trucks coming to that area along with other vehicles, but if it is a simple residential area, then you will find there are only cars or scooters or bikes which are coming in that area. So, the requirements are different in terms of the vehicle type and therefore, the sizes also which are required to be dedicated for parking. Parking by time in a day, by day in a week, so we say that the parking is allowed for the heavy vehicles only after 10 pm or only after 8 pm in an area and can be done up to 6 am in the morning or 8 am in the morning or we may say that the parking is not allowed near the schools by for certain big size of vehicles or if the other vehicles are coming, they can park momentarily for a drop or a pick reason only, but they cannot be parked for a longer duration there. So, whatever those things are there, say by day in a week, we may have these type of things. The space management can also be done through the use of ITS, where we have the variable message signs.
So, these variable message signs can be utilized so as to define that at which particular location the parking is available, at which location the parking is not available. So, it reduces the time of search for the parker and they are well informed, they reaches the location directly and park their vehicle. So, those frustrations for searching of parking spaces will not be there. Then in areas where the public transport is either available or is not available, there also we have to see that what type of parking facilities are required. And when we are talking about this, then this can be associated with IPT and this can also be associated with NMT. So, the intermediate public transport or the known motorized transport because they can become the access mode to the public transport. So, if uh, that is a situation then the parking needs to be there for these type of vehicles at such locations. A spillover parking is also an problem because this is a high priced area and this high priced area the land values are high and but the people activities are also quite high and what we found at that uh, uh, there is a lot of parking which is getting out of the system. So, the how this can be managed is another issue to be looked at. Then the prohibitions can be there. The prohibitions can be in terms of uh, the type of road systems. We have discussed about say in urban roads the arterials or sub arterials or in the case of rural highways the high speed roads where the parking should not be allowed unless and until there is a specific requirement of a location. Then near the intersections because when you are going with respect to intersection in this form and the vehicle has been parked here, then it will going to reduce the visibility for the vehicles which are maneuvering in this form. So, that is also an important issue. So, it is to be looked at that for a certain distance beyond the intersection or the tangent line of the intersection, the parking should not be there. On the narrow roads, this should not be there. So, it is 5.75 meter wide with two way traffic and 4 meter wide with one way traffic and the busy streets. Then there may be a possibility that uh, there is a pedestrian crossing here and uh, with that pedestrian crossing there may be a stop line. So, the parking has to be taken away with respect to this by certain distance. So, that there is a clear visibility for the pedestrians who are there and the vehicles which are going to cross on this uh, marked location. So, that is also another issue which needs to be considered. So, this type of prohibition has to be there. Uh, near bridges or tunnels or underpasses are not only near, but it can also be within these areas inside the bridge on the inside the tunnel or uh, under the underpass uh, carriageway there also the parking should not be there. Now, entrance driveways can be there. So, there is a development in the area and there is a driveway being provided. So, the vehicles can get in and out of this particular location and if the parking is there then the visibility is going to be hampered by the vehicles which are moving at this. So, we have talked about the uh, visibility triangles. So, the same thing same philosophy has to be taken care of here and uh, that is why it should be prohibited at these conditions. Then underside of flyovers or uh, overpasses. So, you have this flyover and there is a crossroad here. So, what happens is if you look at in terms of an elevation then this is going to be a situation like this and there will be so, piers and abutments or the columns on which this may be supported. So, if uh, this is being constructed in this form then these are the open spaces and the different type of road users may like to park their vehicle. But if they do that, then what will happen is if the traffic is coming in this direction here and there is a vehicle which is being parked in this way and comes out all of a sudden, then there is going to be a hazardous situation occurring at that location. So, we should not allow these type of parkings also. Then the restrictions which we talk, these restrictions can be in different forms. They can be in the form of type of a vehicle. We have looked at uh, those things. They can be in terms of the location of parking, one side, another side, none of the sides on either of the side of the carriageway. So, whatever that is there, time in a day, where is peak versus off peak we can say during the peak time no parking is being allowed, but in the off peak time it is allowed. 
duration of parking at a stretch in terms of the time limits that the parking is allowed for continuous 2 hours and if you take plus 1 hour then this is very costly. So, we are trying to induce a situation that the demand is being reduced in this way and the people who are parking they just go away within the time frame. The vehicle registration number this can be another way of doing it based on that the last digit is say E1 and odd. So, we can say that uh, today these vehicles are going to be there with the E1 numbers tomorrow it can be odd and so side of the carriageway we have discussed. Parking fee is another thing which may be there. Now, in the case of parking fee it can be no fee versus the fixed fee or the variable fee. No fee is the best thing which may happen to any parker, but depending on the land use as well as the cost of land and its availability. The decision is going to be there whether we can work with the fixed system or we have to go with the variable system and this variable system can also be with respect to the vehicle type. So, for smaller vehicles the costing is less for bigger vehicles the costing is more because they are going to occupy more of the spaces. Fee for a specific hours in a day or if it is a total congested busy area then it can be throughout the day also. It can be as I said here by type of the vehicle by land use by its value and therefore, in this case depending on this land value say if you are in a Mumbai and you say you are going to park at Nariman point the cost is too high. So, this can be a premium type of a parking. So, it may be something like 200 rupees an hour or 300 rupees an hour, but if you come out of that and you are in a suburbs area of Mumbai there it may happen that even the simple ordinary parking system can be workable there and you may be charging only something like 20 rupees an hour or 50 rupees an hour in between there can be a business type of parking. And then whatever the fees have been levied they can be collected by different manners by different ways that means, it can be manual it can be card oriented it can be electronic system. So, we stop here and we will be continuing with uh, our uh, rest of the discussion on uh, uh, the various these type of uh, policies which can be there or the principles which can be followed uh, for the parking facilities and the provision of that in an area. Till then thank you and bye.